Hi everyone, my name is Danielle and welcome to another episode of Board Game Bakes. This is a fun show where we make board game themed treats and components from some of your favorite games. This week we make a Halloween themed treat. My favorite Halloween game is Betrayal at House on the Hill, probably because it's one of the games that I started playing early on with friends. It may actually be one of my favorite overall co-op games. So the game starts with everyone on the same team and you go around playing room tiles and doing more funny actions. Eventually, based on the omens on the table and a dice roll, the haunt begins. And then for the haunt, we have the traitor, which could be one player or even be the house against everyone else. So they need to see who wins, the traitor or all your other teammates. I personally don't really like being the traitor, but it could be fun too. To make our betrayal at House of the Hill cake, we're going to do a chocolate cake with peanut butter frosting. And it's going to be one. Three layers high for the roof. We're also going to incorporate some Rice Krispies in to do some roof like modeling. And a lot of fun decorations to make it a super creepy house. Let's get started. To make our peanut butter frosting filling, you're going to need two cups or four sticks of salted butter at room temperature, one and a quarter cups of peanut butter, six to seven tablespoons of milk, and eight cups of powdered sugar. First time making our frosting is to cream together the peanut butter and the butter. Now I'm gonna add half of the milk and half of the powdered sugar. I may want to stand back for this. <laughs> now I'm gonna add the rest of my milk and incorporate that and the rest of this amount of powdered sugar. It's good to me. To make the Rice Krispie Treat portion of the decorations, you're going to need 6 cups of rice cereal, 10 ounces of marshmallows, and 3 tablespoons of butter. First step is to melt your butter over medium heat. Now that the butter is melted, you have to add all your marshmallows and starch so they're all melted. Now that the marshmallows and butter are melted, it's time to add the Rice Krispies and stir. Time to transfer to the pan. This recipe used two box chocolate cake mixes to make. I made them both in a 13 by 9 pan. For the first cake, I cut in half to make the two layers for our, the bottom layer of our cake. For the second pan, I cut into four pieces. I used two of the pieces to make the second layer, and I cut one of the remaining pieces in half to make our top layer and use the remainder for crumbs for decorating our cake. To begin constructing our cake, you want to ice the middle layer with the peanut butter buttercream and around the outsides for all three of the different layers of the cake. This way, they're ready for fondant. Okay, I'm gonna admit, I've never actually done this before, but making haunted house cake seems like a good place to start because it doesn't matter if it looks perfect. A little cornstarch. In order to put fondant on the cake, the first thing I did was to roll it out basically as thin as I could get it. Then once it was all smooth, I used a rolling pan to get off the counter and to roll it on top of the cake. Finally, I smoothed it down and used different tools to get as smooth as possible and to cut off the excess. See if I can get better for the other two layers. For the second floor, I used a Rice Krispie treat and I used a knife just to give it a slant. I'm going to put it here and attempt to cover it with fondant too. This way it's part of the roof. I cut four triangles out of the Rice Krispie treats and I'm putting them together to form a roof. I'm going to try and cover it in fondant. Here are the four completed layers, three cake layers, and the roof is just made out of Rice Krispies. To stack the different cake layers, you're going to need these bamboo rods and a hefty hedge cover. <laughs> I decided to use five bamboo rods for the first and second layer, and three for the top layer. Ta -da! Next up is to make your chocolate decorations. To do this, I use the double broiler method. So I heat up the water in the pot, and I put my chocolate on top and stir it until it's melted. Then I dipped in the Rice Krispie decorations I made, which were mainly tombstones and part of the fence. I also dipped in thin pretzel sticks that I used to make a fence. To make the fondant decorations, I dyed a little bit of fondant yellow using my yellow food gel, and gray using some black food gel. 
I add some food coloring and tonic wire to royal icing to make some accents for my decorations. The tonic wire should help it glow in the dark. I use the yellow fondant to cut out the windows and the door. You may notice that the lines aren't really crisp and that is because in the picture it's a lot more faded and spooky. I use the light yellow and gray roll icing to add accents to the windows. I use the gray fine to create the windows and the long steps that come from the house. I also use the gray royal icing on the windows and the yellow royal icing on the steps to help them pop. In an attempt to make things glow a little bit more, I took some of my white icing that has the tonic water in it and spread it over a lot of the pictures. This way they totally glow some more in the dark. As a final touch, I took the leftover piece of cake I had and crumbled it up to create dirt. I also used some yellow, blue, and black food coloring and some shredded coconut to make the effect of grass. Okay, we finally made it. It's time to put together our haunted house. I think first I'm going to start putting things on the house. Now I'm going to add our long set of stairs and the patio. Spooky details to this gargoyle. Time to add the fence posts. Next I add the pillars to the front porch that have a little added gray royal icing to look more like rocks. Time to paint the lawn with chocolate icing. So we'll add our spooky gravestones. Add some shredded cake and coconut for an added scary lawn effect. Now I took the time to add essentially squiggles to all the roofs to get the appearance of tiles. The last step, yay, is to add the fence around your house. You may notice that the pretzels kind of want to crumble apart, and that's okay because it's a haunted house fence. It's supposed to fall apart. Voila! Our cake is complete and I think it looks pretty spooky. And if you look, it's pretty tall too. The cake looks pretty spooky during the day, but like all haunted houses, it looks spookier at night. The tonic water we added and the light color frostings help the cake to pop under the black light. It looks pretty spooky. Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. Please like, comment, and subscribe below. Let me know in the comments if there's any games or recipes you'd like to see featured on the show. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Time to try the cake. Peanut butter and chocolate. My favorite. Happy Halloween. Bye. Okay, night people. If you could have your hump anything, what would it be? You'd be turned into cookies. To suffer being eaten and torn limb from limb. <laughs> Happy Halloween!